what I'm going to talk about today is the actual sequence of events and where things go when you put a pulmonary artery catheter in. Okay? And a few little missteps that might occur along the way. And it's worth, worth knowing that. Okay? So here's a way to visualize it without cutting open your patient and actually taking a look. Okay? First, we're going to describe everything in a perfect world. Okay? When you introduce, usually through a right IJ stick, uh, the PA catheter here, it comes down to here. One thing to remember is the balloon is a little air bubble. And air bubbles do what? They float to the top. Okay, they float to the top. So that's what you try to do when you're floating, as they say, a swan. So we're at 20. Okay, we'd get, be getting a CVP number now. You now inflate the balloon, feed it through. Okay, so again, your number's going to be about 10 here. You float it into here. Okay, once you're in the RV, you're going to be getting the characteristic RV trace. Okay, now the characteristic RV trace, very good to know this because if the catheter pulls back and you're in the RV, you can get rhythm troubles. Doesn't have, shall we say, doesn't have a diastolic pressure. It's 25 over zero. Okay, it goes all the way down to zero. Remember, it takes the presence of a valve to give you a diastolic pressure, you could say. If we put the swan, God forbid, in the left ventricle, remember it would be 120 over zero. It wouldn't be 120 over 80. Okay, you got to have a valve. So now our PA is in the right ventricle. And the balloon is inflated, it continues to float, and is carried along by flow. Remember, this is a flow-directed pulmonary artery catheter. Good flow will help it come right out into the PA. Okay? What happens when you put this in someone who has bad flow, someone with bad congestive heart failure, bad EF, 10% EF, someone who maybe is on a transplant list? Well, the trouble is there's not much flow for the flow-directed catheter. So that's where you'll see the swan sort of bounce around and hang around and sometimes can even coil in the right ventricle. And that can be a real pain in the neck. Now with adequate flow, the balloon comes up, goes out the PA, okay? Once it's past the pulmonic valve, you now, shall we say, get a diastolic pressure. Let's call this a healthy patient, 25 over 10, say, okay? We now continue to float, okay, out, 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 out and we will eventually get a wedge, okay? We'll get a wedge, and that's when we have occluded the pulmonary vessel that we're in. That's why it's called a pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, okay? What does that give us? That gives us a damped, indirect measure of what's going on in the left atrium. It's not a direct measure by any stretch. It is damped and indirect, but that's what the wedge is all about, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a couple of pitfalls that can happen here, okay? One classic pitfall, and it has happened, is you put things in the wrong place. And when you put this into the left ventricle, I can tell you right now, you're going to get a heck of a high pressure, and you know you're in trouble. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't get much flow through here, this thing can get hung up in here. The heart, as you can see, is a very crowded place, okay? Between the chordae tendinae, the papillary muscles, I'm surprised anything gets through here. So it can get hung up in here. Okay, you can get a knot, you can get a knot in there. If the balloon for whatever reason ruptures, okay, maybe you didn't check it or something and the balloon ruptured, now when you try to get it to float out, it really doesn't have that air bubble. It doesn't have that air bubble to float up and out, okay? So that'll really get hung up in here, okay? So you always want to double check and make sure that that, that balloon is actually still working. Now, a couple, a couple dangerous things. If you leave the balloon up, you've occluded the pulmonary artery vessel, and you can get an infarct. You can get an infarct in the lung area if we keep this up. Now, the most dreaded complication, and the thing that I have seen a few times, and it's just an awful thing, is a PA rupture. And I'm going to demonstrate just exactly how that could happen. If this goes far enough out into a tiny enough vessel, and you then inflate it at the wrong time, this can what? It can tear apart a vessel, okay? The pulmonary vasculature is very thin. It's not used to seeing high pressures. So, I mean, the, the pulmonary artery, you can almost, it's almost kind of like a vein, really, in, in that, that it's not thick and tough and muscular, not at all like the aorta, okay? So you get out to one of these thin little vessels, and you inflate that balloon at the wrong time, 
suddenly the trachea or the endotracheal tube are filled with bright blood and it's not a good thing for anybody. What's the best thing to do in a case like that? Well, the best thing to do is to jump in a time machine, go back in time and make sure it didn't happen. But if it does happen, generally people say, keep the balloon inflated. That will tampon out it off. Do yourself a favor. Don't let it happen to you, okay? When I'm using a PA, I am so exquisitely aware of the danger of a PA rupture. One thing I do, this is controversial, you don't have to believe me or follow what I do. As soon as I get a PA pressure, I'm happy. Leave it right there. To go through all the fuss to go all the way out and get a wedge, I just don't see that wedge number adding that much to your management that it's worth risking a PA rupture. I tell people, if I don't have a wedge, I have a lot of other things to go on. If I have a PA rupture, I have nothing to go on. So that's how a swan floats out, and that's some of the mishaps and pitfalls of placing a swan.